Hello everyone, Fanta here, you're watching FantaVision, and today I'm discussing the training at GameStop, because I've discussed so many different things, but for some reason I've missed out on what the training is actually like when you're working at GameStop, or at least when you're, you're first working at GameStop. What are those first few weeks really like? So I've talked about how to get a job there, what happens when you get a job there. And I've had a couple people ask me this, and I think now is a good time to answer it because I'm running low on ideas. Keep putting those ideas down below in the comments because I seriously am running out. Thank you so much. So, uh, I'm drinking a uh, New Belgium Citradelic today. It's a little bit older than it should be, so it's a little bit stale. It's unfortunate. Just got back from San Diego, had a lot of wonderful fresh beer, and I come back to my stale beer that's been sitting in my fridge for a while, but that's fine still drinkable. So the first couple of weeks that you're going to be experiencing while working at GameStop, you're going to be doing lots of stuff kind of like a lot of other retail places. You're going to be doing these stupid computer-based learning things. They don't call them that at GameStop. Now also, I do want to give a disclaimer that a lot of the information I'm giving is back when I worked at GameStop. Of course, this was several years ago, so maybe training has changed a little bit, but I feel confident enough to say that most of this is going to be about the same. If I'm wrong and you work there currently, feel free to correct me. Let me know what has been updated, but this was my experience when I first started working there. So when I first started working there, there were definitely a lot of paper stuff. Oh, by the way... <laughs> I know I'm also going to talk about when I first started working there, but I'm also going to talk about training other people because their training was a little bit different from mine because of how many years in between it was. So when I first started working there, there wasn't as much computer-based learning stuff as there was later down the road when I was training people. We still had people fill out for many years up until the last couple of years I was there. We had them filling out paperwork. We had them take paper quizzes and we would have an answer key like a school and uh, grade them. I mean, it was just basic, basic stuff. And it was really easy, like different steps and matching different things with lines and like, oh, if they're looking for this, this is what you suggest. If they're this old, you should steer them towards this game if... You know, stuff like that. Really simple stuff. I mean, a monkey could answer these questions and do just fine. And the computer-based stuff, like I said, later on down the road, just as easy. They give you several attempts at these quizzes to do well. And you get points added to your account. The points were such a lie, too. I think I've talked about the points forever ago, so I don't mind repeating myself here. But... When you were filling out these different quizzes and these learning modules, you would get points and you'd level up and supposedly at some point there was this point shop that was going to open up and employees were going to get discounts and merchandise and just like cool shit for spending all of this time learning, you know, staying up to date on what's new in GameStop and keeping your skills sharpened just keep, uh, you know, you just keep doing these quizzes. And that never opened. That never, that was just a complete lie. I mean, it was like a solid year that I was filling out these stupid ass quizzes and doing these learning modules and doing the virtual store or whatever. Didn't get shit. I, I didn't get anything. It was just a waste of time. But hey, I guess that's what a lot of working at GameStop is. Wasting time. It's either feast or famine. Kind of the same way with a lot of office jobs. Um, you either have tons of work, tons of customers, or it's just completely dead, and you're looking to pass the time as quickly as possible. So, another thing that you're going to be going through, besides the, the paper learning, which I don't think exists anymore, I'm pretty sure it's all on the computer, very easy, nothing to worry about. And another thing is, like I said before, about seasonal people, that's probably when you're going to be hired. If you're not hired during that time, you don't have to worry about competition as much. You do have to worry about, you know, keeping your job, just not being a piece of shit. But besides that, I mean, it's pretty easy what you're doing to keep your job in the beginning because they do give you a lot of slack. They will start teaching you about the different numbers and goals you have to hit. And a lot of it is role-playing. 
not sexual. It's not like you're doing weird shit. This is just, uh, this is like pretending you're the customer and then pretending you're the, you know, the clerk and your manager is the customer. And you got to hit all the stupid things like, oh, did you tell them about the pre-order? Oh, did you tell them about the gameplay guarantee? Oh, did you tell them about whatever, you know, the power rewards card and some other random shit that's going on that you have to tell them? And if you do, if you miss any of them in the checklist, they'll just keep grilling you on it. And that's super easy. I mean, it's not, it's not like really a high pressure thing, not really high stress. I mean, if you get it wrong, like I said, you just do it again. And I mean, why would you do it wrong? It's so easy. You just, you just remember these steps and then you, you're good. Um, they teach you, of course, the math of the discount card. While the discount card still has 10% off, it'll be a different training when they don't have that anymore. It'll be really interesting to see how they sell that stupid ass card without that 10% off of used games. I don't, it'll be really interesting. Um, but I guess supposedly the number of used game sales they were having in the first place was all made up. I could see that, like I said, a lot of shady shit going on at GameStop. I mean, you've, you've heard my stuff, you've heard Camelot's now, you've heard Clean Prince Gaming, you've heard all these people by now, I'm sure, and we've all talked about the shady shit that goes on there, and you'll definitely see a lot of that if you work there. And it, it kind of starts in the training, how they tell you to use the power of suggestion to guide the customers over to the pre-owned area. Like I said, not all GameStops do this nowadays. My GameStop did. You had to leave the counter, go grab the customer, and take them to the designated console they're looking for in the pre-owned section because that's where GameStop makes their money. Another thing is phone calls. God damn, the phone calls sucked because they had these stupid ass greetings that kept changing. And at the time, I was terrible on the phone. Absolutely terrible. I mean, I was, I, I, I hated, I still not a huge fan of being on the phone. I really don't like it. And especially with like random people, I just feel sketched out. I'm not, I'm not used to it. I'm probably not used to it. Anymore. I probably don't give a shit anymore because of all those years at GameStop and Walmart. But I just felt so sketched out on the phone. I felt so nervous. I always forgot that damn greeting because I was like, I don't want to botch this up. And then I did every single time because of how freaking long it was. It was like, thank you for calling GameStop, blah, 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 blah. We're currently, we're having blah, 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 and this, this, and this. Oh, don't forget to bring your used games. You have to say that at the end. You have just, it's just all these layers of just bullshit. I mean, I haven't heard that in quite a while. I don't think I've heard even a, a weird phone greeting in a while. Usually it's just, thanks for calling GameStop at whatever. But before, god damn, you had to just do this whole thing. Another thing that you're going to have to do when you're a newbie is you're you're basically everybody's bitch when you're the newbie. Just saying, that's how it works everywhere. If you are new, you're fucked. I mean, you're just going to have to do everything that other people don't want to do that have been there longer than you. So you're going to be having to do these stupid pre-order calls. I know this has nothing to do with training, but they will train you on this. They give you this long freaking paragraph you have to recite into each answering machine. It's just, it's just so frustrating. It's so tedious. It's so time consuming. You get this list of like 150 people and you have to call 150 people and you have to go down the same spiel and you have to tell them the trading deals and you gotta make sure it's the right person on the phone and if it's not the right person please give them this message you're probably not going to um but the thing is is sometimes because i did this in the phone in the back because you don't want to be in a game stop where the guy's just calling a bunch of random people going hey is this is this billy bob you don't want to hear that every single time that there's a new pre-order that they can come pick up there's a new release so i did it in the back and occasionally the managers would pick up and listen to the line and make sure that you are saying it correctly now they rarely did this and i could see on the camera whether or not they were doing it so it's not like they could ever really surprise me i don't know how your store is going to work but a lot of them don't have the tvs in the back so you can't tell if they're on the phone listening to you but when they weren't listening i would just kind of like oh is this person there no we'll let them know this game's coming out and they got a pre-order for it okay cool 
because they're not going to relay the trade-in message. They're not going to relay some marketing BS that I am trying to relay, you know? You're just wasting time at that point. You're wasting oxygen this this parent or whoever that really doesn't care and is just going to pass part of the message on. Usually it's just, oh, GameStop called. That's that's what they would pass on. And then I'd get the call, I'm like, you called? And it's like, yeah, I told them why I called, but it's telephone. It's literally the game telephone in real life. So you're trained on that. And if you're with seasonals, it'll be really interesting because you're going to see how everybody else is doing the whole role-playing thing. You're going to role-play with the seasonals instead of just the managers. The manager is going to kind of step back and watch it all play out. You go grab a bunch of random games, pretend you're shopping, stuff like that. And really, you're just kind of you're just kind of thrown in it. You know, I mean, it's not like, I mean, you can watch a couple transactions, but after a while, you're just going to be thrown in. And I don't think it's the most difficult place to be thrown in. The only difficult part is to constantly remember all of the stupid crap you have to pitch every time. And they're really anal about it when you first start working there. Later on, if you've been there a while, they don't care if your numbers are great and you're not pitching it to everybody. You can just say, well, that person didn't look like they were going to. So I didn't want to waste my time and annoy this person. Which they'll usually accept because that's part of the job is reading the customer going, okay, what is this person interested in? And that's something you really start getting good at is reading the customer and just kind of interacting with random people. Like I said in the video where I talk about how to get a job at GameStop, same thing with keeping it, same thing with the training. You need to be able to talk to random people. If you can't talk to random people, this is not the job for you. I don't know what job is, honestly. Maybe just an office job, something like that. I really don't have to talk to that many people throughout the day. But when I worked retail, it didn't matter where it was. I had to constantly be able to interact, hold a conversation, and sell random people things. It's just, you know, it's honestly, it's a good skill to have in life. It's one thing I can say that GameStop did, you know, it was a good thing for my life. It was the build, the ability to talk to random people. Sure, I'm not like a huge party goer. Yeah, I don't just approach random strangers when I'm out places, but I can if I need to. And I feel like that's a really good thing to have in life because it'll also help you get other jobs because you're not going to work at GameStop forever. They're going to be shut down at some point. They really are. There's a lot of analysts saying that they're going to be around uh, another 10 years because the PS5 and Xbox, Scarlet, whatever it's going to be called. Why are they always secretive? Nobody nobody cares. Just call it, give it the name. PS5 is not secret. It's obviously going to call it PS5. Why it's called the Xbox Scarlet? What does it do? Project Natal? Scorpio? Like, just give it a real name. Anyway, maybe they're still thinking of it. So... That was one thing that was good because, like I said, yeah, they're, they're not going to be around for a long time despite analysts saying, oh, it'll be another 10 years because they're going to have physical games. No, because there are constantly other places that sell games. Amazon is matching every single deal right now that the GameStop sale is having. Why go to GameStop when I can just go on Amazon and get two-day shipping to my house and not have to go to GameStop? So it's a dying business, but if you're going to be there you might as well pick up as many life skills as you can. And the power of suggestion, like I said, the whole sketchiness, I mean, it's not really that sketchy, I guess, if you really think about it. It's just every place that's selling something has the power of suggestion going on. And it's same with Gameplay Guarantee. When they're teaching you how to sell the Gameplay Guarantee, back then at least, now I don't know what the hell they tell you because, I mean, Xbox One and PS4 games are nearly indestructible unless you're a mongoloid. Um... I mean, they're Blu-ray. I, that's so that's so difficult to destroy. I've tried killing a PS3 game for a video, and it took rubbing it against stucco and completely killing the disc to even get it scratched. So back then, you could easily sell these gameplay guarantees on 360 games because you look at the system wrong, and it puts that freaking circle scratch in it. And that happened all the time. People would bump the system. People would look at it wrong. The system would just do it for no reason. I had that happen a couple times. So 
you could easily sell the gameplay guarantee and those games scratch so easily the 360 games oh my god it was like they're made of paper people would like i said just look at these things put them back in the case and they'd break so selling gameplay guarantees they teach you to talk about how important it is how expensive emphasize that this purchase needs to be protected for uh, a year and that that's like a huge value which honestly back in the 360 era it was great for parents and i had a lot of people come back and use the gpg just because like i said 360 discs were made in a paper mill and nowadays i don't know how they're selling it because switch is a cartridge i did occasionally sell gpgs on ds cartridges i don't know why they bought them but i always offered it because it was such an easy number to boost especially if it was like they're buying a bunch of really cheap ones and just a massive amount for some reason people would just be like oh yeah put a dollar gpg on that dollar game i don't you're just buying the game again already if you're gonna buy the game again why are you getting the dollar gameplay guarantee it doesn't make sense but it was funny like just do it on all of them and i'm like okay and I just keep hitting the button all the way down. Power Rewards card used to be easier to sell too. That's the thing during your training. You're going to have to be taught how to sell that Power Rewards card. And like I said before, you'd use math. And you'd have them bring up the used games. You'd deduct 10%. And you go, oh, well, it's actually cheaper than you think. And you get the, the magazine or whatnot. And we'd also have the magazine at the store. I haven't seen those magazines at the store in a long time. Maybe I just didn't see them. But... That was a huge thing, and I've talked about this during the Power Rewards card video, that that was a huge selling factor. Because when you're selling that card, I mean, you're selling a card. I mean, that's just kind of boring. A lot of people can't really think of discounts in the future. That's a lot of thing. You'll even hear it in these manipulative microtransaction processes. You have to tell, you have to have the customer understand the immediate value of something. And that's why you do the percentages. That's why you say, oh, this card's only worth this much. And you're already saving this much. Can you imagine the future? So you're already saying, well, look, it's already showing you immediate savings. If that doesn't work, the immediate benefit of having that magazine, especially if you've got a kid, that kid is going to have something to read on the way home. That's what always, I was so excited to go to GameStop as a kid because if my magazine didn't come in, they were always nice enough to give me another one. Or I was just like in the store. They knew I had the card. They just gave me one anyway. So I didn't have to wait for it in the mail. It was awesome. So that immediate sense of value when you're handing the customer another item, you're giving them the magazine, it's huge. And if you're not gonna have that in stores anymore and you're not gonna have that percentage discount, they're gonna, it's gonna be even more difficult to train that. It's gonna be even more difficult to sell it. And it's gonna be even more difficult to hit these stupid ass numbers that they constantly will put on you every single week. That's another thing, it's dependent upon the store you're in, but sometimes they'll make you write your own goals. It's a pain in the ass, and they usually give you some sort of number configuration to do. Um, actually, no, I think it was the managers. I, I had to do that as a manager, not as a GA, or whatever they call them now. They used to be called game advisors. I don't know what the hell they call them now. They keep changing the names. There's just these arbitrary, stupid-ass names. I don't know why. I don't, there's like senior game advisor and I was like store leader. I used to be like store manager. Now it's store leader for some reason and assistant store leader. It's just these stupid names and I don't, I don't get it. Another thing when the training happens is they're going to be training you to just kind of pick a, a couple of the top titles for each of the systems to memorize. So when somebody comes up and they are buying games for a certain system you immediately know okay well these games are coming out soon these are the popular ones i'm going to suggest these to the customer and then you just kind of go down that list and if they say no that's fine but you try to learn as much as you can about those few games for each of those systems so you at least have some sort of pitch each time they come up to, to uh, buy something and they also teach you that if somebody pre-orders something you don't stop at the first one because you've already kind of struck gold, keep digging, there might be more. And more often than not, if somebody's gonna pre-order one thing, they're more likely to pre-order something else because they've already got that pre-ordering mindset and they're already got the mindset that they're gonna be plunking down more money for games that they can't even get yet. And it's easy to get them excited about other things that they're already excited enough to pre-order. 
I mean, I don't really pre-order anything anymore unless I get some sort of discount. Best Buy, you get a $10 gift card. Amazon, you get a $10 gift card. Um, and I still have somebody else's game, Gamers Club Unlocked card. So I can still get 20% and that $10 gift card. But besides that, GameStop, there's no reason. Like a keychain, a poster, like who gives a shit? I mean, that's not, that's not motivation enough. But if somebody's already motivated to pre-order something before it comes out for literally no reason because we're not going to run out of it, unless it's some niche game, then uh, they're already in the mindset. They're already in the mindset to pay for something that's not out. So you can easily get them to pre-order more things. And that's the thing you learn about people. You learn about human behavior as you're working there. And that's kind of another life lesson that you can apply. You can, you can learn a lot about a person from what they buy and how they buy. I mean, people will go in there, buy a game with no research at all, which I don't understand. The internet existed back when I worked at GameStop. And we happily gave advice. But they would still just come in, buy something, and then they'd hate it. And then they just try to return it, but they can't. So they have to trade it in and they're all upset. But it's like, we, we warned you. Why didn't you do research? Back then we had this cool little kiosk thing that they taught us how to use as well. They're not going to teach it anymore because it doesn't exist. Despite it being awesome. I don't know why it doesn't exist anymore. You could scan the game and you could look at trailers. You could look at screenshots. You could look at user reviews. It was the coolest thing ever. I don't know why that doesn't exist anymore. I guess it was too expensive, but it was this touchscreen thing. I don't remember it being there for that long. But I remember it being there and it was so cool. I love messing around with it. That's so weird. Yeah, why doesn't that exist anymore? One of the things I really remember was it would kind of do like one of those uh, idle things, kind of like an arcade to attract people. Like attraction mode, I believe is what it's called, obviously, to attract people. Attraction mode. It would just play random trailers about the sound. And I remember I kept seeing the, the actor that played Gus Fring in the trailer for Destiny. It says nothing to do with training. I just remember that. Because I completely forgot that kiosk even existed. I only ever saw it in my GameStop. And I don't believe it was around that long, which is weird. It's weird. It was just a, a way to inform customers. But maybe because, I guess, GameStop's key crowd is just uninformed people. And that's why they're at GameStop in the first place. I don't know. So those are, uh, that's, that's the whole training spiel. That's all I can think of at the moment. If I think of something else, I'll throw it into another Tales from Retail. I won't do a whole new dedicated one. Um, I know I was going to talk about what it was like training people. It was basically the same thing, like except, like I said, except for more computer-based stuff. And whatever the policies were at the time, policies are so fluid, they're, they're changing all the time, so you never know what they're going to be teaching you at that specific moment and unlearning, making you unlearn and then do something else, like the whole circle of life thing supposedly doesn't exist anymore, even though they still try to encourage trades, they still try to encourage pre-orders. I mean, all that's part of the circle of life. I don't know. It's... It's just, it's just retail. <laughs> it's just a smaller retail environment. And honestly, you could do worse working in other places. It's definitely not the best place to work by any stretch of the imagination. But if you've got cool coworkers, depending on your location, 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 it could be a decent place to work uh, or shop at. I mean, a lot of people talk about how they've got cool GameStops they shop at. I mean, my local GameStop is pretty cool. My old local GameStop for my old house was a pile of dog shit because they would card you for every single thing you bought. Look at me. Do I need to get carded for an M-rated game? I don't think so. So thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know if I missed anything with the training. Please, for the love of God, let me more let me know more ideas of what you want to see from future Tales from Retail episodes about GameStop. I've got a couple quite a few more uh, ideas for Walmart, so I'm kind of good there, and I still needed to get more stuff from Steven. I gotta get his ass down here. Have a Fanta. Fantastic day. See you guys. Quick outro. I got one of these GameCube 
HD, um, HDMI adapters so we can start scre streaming GameCube games. Uh, the first game we're going to stream is probably Luigi's Mansion, and we might even be doing that this Wednesday, so go follow on twitch.tv slash fuffofanta. Also, facial hair or no? I haven't quite decided yet.